All right, we're we're deep inside silly season here. We're we're getting ready for practice day, and the most important and exciting part of silly season is sort of tracking the different transactions and where drivers are headed, different speedways, different divisions. I got a man on the phone right now who not only is tackling a different division, he's also tackling a different speedway this year. We've always known him as a, a Varney Motor Speedway regular. As of late, he was a Oscar Modified Tour regular. But he's going to throw all that out the window this year because he's hopping back in a limited late model for the first time in a long time. And he's headed up to Sobble Speedway, none other than relentless Tommy Robb. And Tommy, I got I mean, the first things first, how excited are you to get back to late model racing? I'm really excited. It's been uh, three years that I've been out of the car, and the mod was great, but I love late models. Now, you you left late model racing. I'm trying to remember what the line was. I think you, you really just needed something new, right? You needed a change. That's why you left. So what, what kind of pulled you back to full fendered racing? Well, um, it wasn't so much that it pulled me back. It was we spent the last two years with the modified doing the Oscar tour, and I think we had the last two years of a lot of a lot of effort and work we put into the car to get nothing out of it. Not so much nothing, um, a lot of frustration. When we left our late model program, we were probably the best we were where we were running Varney at the time. Um, I think I just the cost of running a touring series got to me a little bit and going back to my late model program, which I know is, is good. Um, I'm just looking forward to getting back on top of our game. Hey, it just felt like you were hit with wave after wave of bad luck. You know, I mean, it's like you were, you were on the front lines and you're getting hit with bullets and you can't get out of the way. I mean, no matter it, it was mechanical issues, and then you'd get wrecked, and then there was, I think there was one week you broke your broke your wrist or broke your arm in a wreck at Barry. Yep. So it was everything. It was it was the physical toll. I'm sure it was mentally and emotionally exhausting. Uh, was was there any one reason why the why all these mechanical failures and difficulties kept coming up? Uh, no, I don't think there was one reason. I mean, it, it sure wasn't for a lack of, of hard work or input on our parts. Um, we had great help through the year with Greg Gibson and Gary McLean. Um, I, I just We couldn't quite put our finger on it. I mean, we went we gave the series a try. We still have the car. It's nothing that we're, we're going to get away from completely. Um, we didn't have terrible luck when we first started in the first year. I mean, we had we had top fives at Peterborough both times we went there. We picked up a couple of heat race wins, a bunch of top tens at places like Sunset. It just seemed to be it's that series. If you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, you're you're not going to come out very well. I mean, you you put a lot of effort into the modified program. Is it something you could see yourself ever going back to full time? You mentioned you're not getting away from it completely, but could you ever see yourself? running for points again behind the wheel of a modified? I think for that to happen, um, i got to come into some, some good sponsor money or the cost of a touring series needs to come down for myself personally. It's not easy running a 10 or 14 schedule series um, running all across the province with the cost we have, and especially with today's economy, with the dollar. You just can't do it. I can't anyways. Did, did you find it to be uh pleasantly challenging the different speedways because i know it's 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 far different than than being at varney on a regular saturday when you got to you know if you're at peterborough one week and delaware the next and then you got to go find the good setup for flamborough i mean it's it, it must have just felt like the other side of the moon to you at that at that first season it, it was a lot different for us but i think that was part of it that i really enjoyed we built the mod to say that we've done it it was one series that i've never raced in before and to get to travel to all these places, I went. We went to six different tracks, and four of them I'd never been to before. So for me, that was exciting, and it made me and the crew work a lot harder because we had to we had to promote a product to get us to the racetrack to be competitive enough to stay in the division and to make ourselves look attractive. Um, obviously, not every time it worked out for us being caught up in something, but the big thing for me with the Oscar Tour was it was something I've never done before. How has the late model game changed since you've been gone? Because you've been gone, what, two two years? Three. Two full years? Three years. Three full years. So three years, shit, like at the rate that, that, that 
that the game out here kind of evolves and changes. Three years is a long time, no? It definitely is. And, I mean, it's I haven't taken my eye off the late models for sure. Um, I've watched everybody evolve, and I, I definitely know how that division has evolved. And uh, touching on something you talked with Jason Parker there with last week, um, the limited late model division itself, I mean, there's only two tracks left with it. Mm-hmm. Me, personally, I think one day you're going to see much like you do in the States, probably, you're going to see one board of late models. And everyone's going to confirm to that, and that's that's the way I'd like to see it go. I don't think we're that far off of the limited late model to a pro late anymore to have the difference. But that's it, time, and I mean, the the dollar right now, too, it, to run... Oh, it's like horrible. Some, it's the, to the exchange have, to run, is maddening. Parker said it the best. I mean, to run that APC series, it costs a lot of money, and with the dollar right now, it's tough without help. But weekly pro late model racing, though, has has not been healthy as of late. I mean, it's it's been a long time since Delaware was was the biggest giant in the valley. You know, I mean, it, it had its time, and it really wasn't that long ago. But it's it's been a few years, and Flambro has had their struggles with car count. I think that's been pretty widely documented. So if if pro late models are are now the future, and if that's where we're headed, why has it not taken off yet on a weekly level? I don't, I can't tell you on a weekly level it's picked off. I mean, if you look at the type of caliper of cars you have at Sunset and limited late models, there's a lot of guys that could go run that APC series with the equipment they have now and be competitive. So I don't think there's a, there's a huge difference. I don't understand why promoters, it seems to be, Maybe there's just a thought process that a pro late model is that much more money for them to bring in. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think one day in the future, and probably very soon, you're going to see it all be one. I, I would love that. I would think, me personally, that, that's excellent. If we could get everybody on the same ground, it would sure as hell make invitationals a lot more interesting. You know, it, it, the the open shows, the possibility of, of having guys that don't normally get to race with one another. I mean, the, the possibilities are infinite. It sounds interesting. Now, I mentioned open shows and invitationals. I'm assuming you're going to hit a few of those this year because the Sobble schedule, from what I understand, from a limited late model point of view, is not very long. Is that correct? Yeah, the Sobble schedule this year for the limited late is actually only six races, and three of those are invitationals. So we only get three points nights to go for a championship. So, I mean, there's lots of time for us to hit up other speedways across Ontario and, and give the invitational scene a try for sure. So what's on your list? Where, where do you want to go and when? I mean, I'm I'm assuming it, at this stage of the off season, you've probably already thought this through and spent a whole lot of money you don't have and logged a whole lot of <laughs> of imaginary miles in the hauler. So where where do you want to go? Um, well, right now with the, the sponsorship money that we have confirmed and and the races that I want to partake in, we're we're definitely going to do both velocity races at Sunset. Um, we're definitely going to hit up the Autumn Colors Classic. We're going to do the points races at Sobble and see what the uh, money left over is after that to, to maybe hit up a few more nights at Sunset. That sounds awesome. I love it. Well, I, is there a chance the car that you have right now, could it become APC Series legal? Should that become a more uh, financially attractive route in the near future, say two or three years down the road? The car I have definitely could be APC worthy. Um, I think watching what everyone's building lately um, over social media and and knowing what was in the series last year, I don't think this is a car I would want to put into that series if I want to be a number one guy and be competitive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, If it's something I'm looking for to to just to try it for a night, to try and get into the race and see what the series is all about, it's definitely something I would do. Now, so you you said three points nights of Sobble. That sounds incredibly short. That sounds like you're you're just sort of you're walking that razor wire. Don't make a mistake. Don't cut a tire. Don't blow up. I mean, it, very very little room for error. If you're racing for a championship, you only got three nights to do it. Yeah, and Sobble's def- they've changed their uh, their program this year. They've switched to double features for the late models. So I mean, it makes it a little more enticing for the guys, but. Three nights, you, like you said, one bad tire, one run out of fuel, and it's your points are pretty much over. As you've seen in years past, the beach, they promote some pretty tight racing up there, and Stoddy proved it last year, winning the points. I think he won it by like four points or something. So, Yeah, it was slim. Josh won by, by a slim margin 
over Parker. They had a really good battle all year long. So, and I know that Stoddy's going back there full time for for the for the three nights. Uh, Jason, of course, Jason Parker has, has liquidated his limited late model assets. So I don't know if you'll see him up there unless he hops in someone else's car. What uh, what made you decide to go to Sobble when you've sort of you, you've been a card carrying member of uh, of the Varney supporters for as long as I've known you for a long time? Why now make the switch to Sobble Speedway? Um, I've got a lot of buddies that race up at Sobble. Um, it's somewhere that I've never run on a nightly basis. We've always gone up and done the dash for cash or whatever invitation was they can promote. Um, money right now isn't something that I could see myself running a full season at Sunset with. There's a, a lot of competition up there, and you got to bring your A game every weekend. Not saying I'm not going to take my A game to Sobble. Um, it's just a lot harder to compete at Sunset, I think, for myself. And the way I see the rules at uh, what is now full throttle, um, it's kind of a mixture between the limited lace and the late models. It's just, to me, you got to be one or the other. Um, Sobble's 40 minutes from home, so I'm going to give it a try. Now, the, and the Sobble roster is, 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 in my opinion, very underrated. And I've been calling it underrated forever, so maybe people are starting to take notice. I don't know. Maybe it's not underrated anymore. But I just think not enough people show love to Sobble because – I mean, Marvin Freiberger, Josh Stoddy, Tim Ellis, Tommy Gibbons. I mean, these, these guys are – that's a hell of a roster. You know, that's a, that's a really good starting four. Uh, you, you throw your name in the mix, and all of a sudden, there's a lot of parity up there. And all of a sudden, these, these six features, these three double feature nights that they're going to have, it, it's going to be awfully tough to get to victory lane. Yeah, I mean, I was up there this past year and watched a lot of the late model races, and you got guys like Junior Farley and Tim Ellis and Schreinhardt they put on a lot of good racing, and the 10 or 12 cars they had, I mean, that's a good field for them, and it was bumper to bumper every night. So I think it's definitely something the fans enjoy to see, and it's something I want to put myself into the mix, too, and see if we can't uh, win a championship. Now, we already got the crystal ball out. We tried to look sort of further down the road in terms of our pro late models and limited late models going to merge. Let me throw another curveball at you. Super stock division eventually becoming your, your 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 weekly headliner. It's already happened at Delaware. Okay, the, the Super Stock Division is essentially your, the their headline division because they're running the Delaware Triple Crown, which is three na- three races, as the name indicates, and that's it. Okay, so Super Stocks are their headline division. Uh, I could certainly see Sobel making that move as early as next year. Uh, is, is this something that could eventually become – Province wide, could you see the Super Sox kind of taking over, or Thunder Cars taking over all over Ontario? There's definitely a class that's come up in the last couple of years. You look at the numbers, and I mean they've they've definitely grown, and it's something. It's a cheap, expensive way, if you want to put it that way, for guys mm-hmm. to go race. And there's a lot of a lot of talented guys still in that division. And I mean, if it's somewhere you want to go to save a little bit of money, but still get yourself noticed and be competitive, that's definitely a place to do it. And it's it's become a, a division that, that guys are, are are taking awfully seriously now. You know, it's it's Sean Chenoweth said it best, I think, two or three years ago, that guys are putting in late model hours on their super stock program. And I thought that was really it was very poetic, very apt the way he put it because he's absolutely right. Because there's not a lot of guys that are that are leaving these things on the trailer all week and and you know inflating the tires and putting some fresh gas in it and taking it to the track on Saturday morning. You know, oh, it, no. it, it's not what it was 15 years ago. Because 15 years ago, the Thunder Car, for sure you could get away with that, 100%. Now, these things are bona fide race cars. They're not anything like what the street stocks used to be. Oh, absolutely. And I I think it's the progression of, of racing itself. I think you're going to see the limited late models are going to migrate to be your pro late models or at least join that class. And I think the Thunder Cars, the way they're going and the cars that the guys are racing – they're going to be a limited late model style car soon. And, I mean, if we can keep the two separate and keep the numbers going in both, things are looking good in Ontario for racing. I, I think a lot of people are too quick to sort of jump on the chicken little sky is falling doomsday banner with pavement racing in Ontario that, that says that it's not doing well. And I, I think that you can make that argument work either way. I mean, if I wanted to sit you down and tell you that pavement racing was dying, all I had to do was tell you that, well, Barry Speedway closed and, so did Mossford. But, I mean, there were a lot of extenuating circumstances in both of those cases, right? It, it, it had very little to do with a racing decision and a lot to do with 
expansion of the area around it. I mean, in terms of Barry, I don't think it would have mattered if they had 250 cars in the pits every night. Because when so, when that concert when the concert folks came in, they wanted that land. Money talks. That 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 place is getting closed no matter what. Oh, absolutely. I, I think I think you just said the best. It is. It's the situation in which those tracks are put into. And the best example for this season, I mean, would be J. Tom. He's gone down to to ten nights of racing, and those are the ten nights that he looked back at last year at his records and said, these are the nights that I broke even or made money on. Mm-hmm. These are the nights that I can put fans in the stands. These are the nights we're going to be open. It's it's all where your fan base is. And for anybody that owns a racetrack, it's a business, and you've got to run it as such. I mean, if you go out on the road to a lot of the tracks in the United States, I mean, you go around the Midwest, there's not a lot of speedways that are running traditional weekly programs anymore. There's a lot of special events only shows where, you know, they'll they'll run, maybe they'll run a few nights of of a, a you know a street stock type class and a couple of different mini stock classes and that'll be their Saturday night and they'll bring in the CRA series or the Jigs All Star Tour one night and then they'll have a Crash Arama demo derby style night and that makes up a schedule of about nine or ten Saturdays and that's their whole schedule. So it's not like Ontario the, the, the tracks here are doing anything different or anything new by adopting these limited schedules. They're just sort of, it's a, it's a sign of the times everywhere. I think, I think the way I'd like to see it, maybe 25 nights in a, in a Saturday night program that tracks used to do. Um, I think the APC series is showing it best. And if you look at the, the two velocities and you look at the autumn colors classic, big invitationals bring big car counts and it puts a lot of fans in the stands. The APC cars, you're bringing in over 35 cars a race. Fans love to see that. If you do that on a Saturday night, that num- that number might be twelve. See, if I uh, let me play devil's advocate for a moment, though, let me argue you just for the sake of arguing. Let's pretend we're on Facebook here and we're getting mad at one another. Uh, if you if all the tracks adopt a special event only schedule or a limited schedule, I feel as though ultimately that's going to hurt your car count. Because if I'm a dude that has a late model, or well, let's call it if I'm a dude that has a super stock. And my track now goes to five races a year. I'm going to race the car I have, okay? But when that car gets destroyed at one of these big invitationals, if I only have five races at my home track, I might not rebuild that that car. I might go buy a camper trailer or a boat or or put that money towards my kid's education or, or, or blow it on a bunch of other useless shit. But I might not rebuild that car just for five races. And I think that... That might be the razor wire balancing act that Jay Tom might be walking right now with his late model division. I, I agree with that 100%. Um, from the other side of it, from the driver's standpoint, I know a couple of guys right now that are, are building new cars or taking the ones they have and cutting them up and rebuilding them for the three races and solve them. So, I mean, I guess it all it's on the drivers and the crews of how serious are you wanting to go to the racetrack, how much does this mean to you. Um, definitely for sure if you're somebody that you know, money's tight, you might put it somewhere else if you get wrecked. Now, it's hard to say. It, it is. You're absolutely right. And, and let me let me move on to – you heard my interview with Jason Park, and we talked a little bit about the spec fuel that's been adopted by the APC series and how a lot of guys felt as though that was necessary. Some guys are now noticing with the cost of the dollar, uh, a spec fuel is going to prove to be very costly. You're a weekly racer uh, now. I mean, you're no longer with a tour. Uh, now that you're back at the weekly level, is a spec fuel something that needs to be looked at for the weekly late model racer, or are we already there? What, what are the what are the fuel rules right now for your common regular Saturday night limited late model competitor? It's definitely nothing like the APC. It's it's you've got your your range of how far you're allowed to go octane wise or whatever, but there is no you gotta race this. And I'm not even sure that going to a a fuel that everyone has to run right across the board is is the way to go. It will definitely make it a lot easier for the guys running the series, doing the teching, stuff like that. Um, as for the racer, if we want to show up and race, we're going to pay whatever it costs to get there. If the fuel is $0.50 cents a liter or $5 a liter, we're going to pay it. In your mind, do you think in the in the future, in the long term, or even in the short term, let's say two, three years, would it be best to go with the same fuel right across the board for everybody? the spec fuel so that you know you're running the exact same thing that uh, that Tommy Gibbons and Marvin Freiberger right next door to you are? I don't think it's a bad idea, no. I mean, if if it equals up 
the competition some more, and it's if it can get to the point you've got to rely more on your ability as a driver and setup, and everything else is more level across the board. Why not try it? I mean, it it just feels like fuel uh, has become now the the debate of the week. You know, before that it was it was tire doping. It felt as though everyone was talking about the best way to to dope a tire, and tracks kind of got wise to it and. A lot of places outlawed it. Now, I'm not up to date on my Sobel rule book. Is tire doping allowed at the beach? Nope. So I'm guessing you're all, you're probably on board with that. Yeah. I, you know what? It's, I watched a lot of sunset last year happen, and I mean, you go back to cost. It might be cheaper to buy that can of dope than it is to buy four new tires. And I mean, if guys are looking for a way to stretch what they have, that was the best way for them to do it. Um, as a competitive standpoint, if you want – if you want everybody to be competitive, the guy that can't afford the new tires or the dope, you're going to, you're going to rule it out. So everyone's on a tire rule or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now the, the limited late model you're bringing back this year, is it the same car that you kind of ran rough shot over Varney with uh, on Saturday nights a few years ago, or is this a different piece? Same car. Now, how much did you have to update it to kind of bring it up to 2016 standards? Cause I know that since you've left, I'm just looking at the Sobel roster Timmy Ellis has built a new car since you've been gone. Marvin Freiberger, I believe, is in a newer car than he was in when you were last around. Um, Tom Gibbons might be in a newer car. It, it, it just seems though there's 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 more guys at Sobel that that have had newer cars in the last three years than ones that haven't. So for you to get on board with the rest of the the A level guys up there, what did you have to change on the car that you ran in 2013? A lot of the updated stuff that we've done just mostly been suspension parts. Um, our chassis was brand new when we started racing this car at Varney, so I mean it's not the chassis itself isn't that old. It's just getting caught back up with the updated suspension stuff and geometry and stuff like that, and just you miss a lot when you're there for three years. Um, but it's definitely something we still took notes on and paid attention to. Now, obviously, the double feature format is something that's that's new to you. Uh, it, it wasn't around three years ago. You're used to running traditional heats and a feature. Now, all of a sudden, uh, we're running heats and two features. Or in the case of Sunset, you're running time trials and then two features. As a competitor, do you feel as though running two features a night, does that dilute the product a little bit? Does that make your win mean a little bit less? Because, I mean, as a track employee, looking back at at the guy that won at 6 o'clock at night, it feels as though that win doesn't carry as much weight as the guy that later wins at 10:30 at night because that's the one that late night win is the one we're remembering for the next seven days. Yeah, I can't. It's going to be like the guys at Sobel because this is going to be new to them and it's it's definitely a new format for me. And for Sobel's point of view, yet we still don't know what we're going to have for a true car count. But I think for the guys at Sunset, um, if you get 30, 35 cars a night. If you win feature A or you win feature B, that's still a pretty big deal because you've beaten 35 of the best drivers in the province. I don't think it takes away from having a feature win. Um, it's always understandable to a fan that maybe that one later in the night is more important because you're used to seeing the two heats in the feature type deal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But as to a driver yourself, if I've still been able to beat 34 of the best other drivers in the province, that's still big for me. Would you prefer Salvo to go to a time trial qualifying instead of the heat races? Well, what what Sobel's hooked up for right now is dependent on car count is the way we're going to do it. Um, if we get over 20 cars, then we're going to be doing the time trials. Mm-hmm. Anything less, we'll we'll do a, a heat race type deal to to figure out qualifying. And will it be like Delaware, where all the cars are out for the heat race, so you're almost running three features? Because that's the way they've kind of reverted back to their qualifying at uh, at Delaware Speedway. I'm not quite sure if they're gonna they're gonna break it up or it might even be a circumstance where we just pull numbers and that's where you're gonna start your first feature and just mm-hmm. luck of the draw. Now, obviously, you're hoping to win a championship at Salva. Let's say that's goal number one. But if we were going down the list, what what else do you want to accomplish? I mean, you've been gone from late model racing for a while. This is your first year back. What do you want to get done so that when you're taking this thing apart in November? you can look back and say, you know what, we, we had a really good year. I feel good about all the work I put in. I feel good about all the money I spent. What, what would you need to do? I think we did first with the Oscar Tour. Um, and I think with the work we've put in this winter, that's something we're definitely going to be able to do. 
Um, obviously, the goal for anybody is to win a championship, but I think with the names that are at the beach, if I can pull off a top five in the points, I'm going to be happy. Um, a lot of the invitationals we went to, we had good finishes at when we were racing it back when we were at Barney, um, top fives, top tens. I think if I could keep something going like that again for my first year back in the program, I would definitely be happy. Tommy, I'm looking forward to it, my man. I appreciate the time. 25 minutes flew by like it was nothing. Um, are you going to be at the Motorama show this this weekend? I will be there. All right, we'll, we'll definitely we'll definitely we'll, we'll we'll catch up. We'll make sure to get you on camera a little bit. We'll we'll talk a little bit more about what you've got coming up in 2016. So that's relentless, Tommy Rob, folks, getting ready to run full time up at Sable Speedway. And by the sounds of it, a pretty aggressive touring schedule as well. So he's coming to a speedway near you. He's out of the mod. He's in the limited late model. We wish him the best of luck, Tommy. Have a great night. Thank you.